What's good guys? This is Al B back with another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Akai MPK Mini MK3. Now the MK3 is the successor to the MK2, which is already a really good keyboard and a really good entry level controller for beginning producers. And even for those more advanced producers who like the versatility that it offered. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how Akai was able to improve with the MK3. Without further ado guys, this is Al B. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and get it plugged up so we can see these nice lights and LEDs. All right guys, here we have it. I've got it plugged up and you can see the nice lights and the all new LED screen. You actually have a screen here, which has been something that has been long requested on the MPK mini series. Starting from the left hand side, you can see they kept the classic joystick from the MK2 series. And this is really nice because you can set it to be your pitch wheel and your modulation wheel in one. By default, left and right changes the pitch and up and down will change whatever modulation you have set. So essentially going up and down or your Y axis will be for modulation, going left and right or your X axis will be for pitch bend. So you can really do some cool things, some cool wobbles and things like that with the joystick. Now, when you move over more to the center, you'll notice these drum pads. These drum pads are the same drum pads that you have on the MPC Beats, that is the newest MPC from Akai. So the pads have definitely been updated and they feel significantly better than what the MK2 feel like, which I'm actually surprised to say because I thought the MK2 felt pretty good. Moving over further, you have your knobs. Your knobs are actually now infinity knobs. They turn forever. Whereas on the MK2, they were limited to just turning all the way right and then back all the way left. We'll take a closer look at that as well. Another thing you're gonna notice that's a big change is the OLED screen here at the top of the controller. And that is gonna be helpful for giving us some feedback inside of the controller to let us know maybe what level we're at when we're changing the knob or let us know what MIDI data is actually being sent to our controller. So that's gonna be helpful for customizing your controller. On the back side, you have your sustain and your USB where you're gonna power it up. This is actually a little bit heavier than the MK2 is. And so they definitely have actually upgraded this as well. And one of the first things that I noticed when I first got it was the key bed. This key bed feels a lot better than the MK2 felt. This key bed feels a lot more like you're on an actual instrument versus being on, you know, a plastic toy or something like that. And that's not to downplay the MK2. It was a good keyboard, but the key bed definitely was not as good as I think it could have been. So Akai stepped it up another notch with the key bed here, and that's really a great improvement and gives you a much better feel, a much better response, and really a absolute high quality build of a controller.
So this is just $120. I really think if you're an entry level producer, it's definitely a controller that you should be looking to get. In addition to the software that it comes with, it comes with Hybrid, which is a really good VST. It comes with Velvet. It comes with Mini Grand as well, which is our three good VSTs. And you can of course get NPC Beats for free now, which is Akai's new DAW. And I'm assuming that you can map this directly to it. I haven't gotten that far yet, but I will be doing some videos on mapping mapping this to FL Studio and we might even check out NPC Beats. So, so look for a card or check in the description for a link to those videos, all right? Let's talk about the MK3 versus the MK2. So here you have your MK2, which has a pretty similar layout to the MK3. I mean, it's essentially the same layout with a few changes. Your, your joystick and your arpeggiator are the same on the MK2 as they are on the MK3. Your pads have been updated. This is These are the older pads that really, they feel pretty good actually still, but the MK3 just manages to take it up another level. Then you have your knobs here, which are limited knobs. They are not infinity knobs like you have on the MK3. So that's where the MK2 some felt was lacking and not having these knobs be infinity knobs. So. They caught on to that at Akai and they improved that on the MK3 version. But these knobs are noticeably smaller. Let's see if I can get a, a good comparison. It's kind of hard to tell here on the camera, but, but the MK3 knobs have a lot more girth to them and a lot easier to grab and you can fine tune whatever parameter you want to in your DAW. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to be, um, that's going to be a thing. That's, that's, that's a nice upgrade there. So for the most part, the keyboards are laid out the same. It's the exact same layout, but they have pretty much upgraded every major component, right? They've upgraded the pads. Um, they upgraded the knobs, right? They're infinite. They're bigger. They added an OLED screen so you can actually get some feedback from the controller itself. So all in all, this is an actual upgrade and not just a name stamp of the MK3. You still have your program change, your program select, and your other MIDI functions here. The key bed, like I talked about before, right? Mine is of course black and white because it's just a color change. Uh, just one of the special edition keyboards for the MK2, but the key bed, it kind of feels super plasticky now that I have the now that I have the MK3 key bed. Now I'm a big fan of Akai. In the back, I have the Akai Advanced controller, uh, and the Advanced has a great MIDI key bed. But this key bed on the MK2 just wasn't that great. They caught on to that, and on the MK3, you got your all new key bed. You got your new drum pads, you got your new knobs, you got your OLED screen. It looks similar, but the feel and the functionality of the MK3 is certainly an upgrade over the MK2. You guys be sure to check back for videos on how to set this up with FL Studio and more. So if you're looking for a new MIDI controller that is really versatile, the MK3 is definitely one that you should be looking into. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that video, please consider subscribing. Without further ado, this is Al B and we are out. Yes, sir.